My name is Alice Jones, and I am the Interim Director in Career Development Services. And today we're going to be talking about informational interviewing. As we begin, I want to kind of start with just the idea of career exploration and the development process and thinking about it actually as a process. Informational interviewing is just one piece of the process that you go through, and it kind of incorporates the communication, the networking, and the interviewing. But as you're working through your strategy, whether you're um, in a PhD program or a master's program, and you're looking for whatever is next, you have to do some searching. You're going to have to talk to people. You will need to do some networking making sure that you have your tools in order, which include a strong resume or a strong CV, and then leading to the interview. And we can talk about interviewing as after you submitted your resume, but there's also a feature of interviewing that kind of comes in the middle between the communication and the networking where you're getting information. So, what we're going to be talking about today is informational interviewing, what it is, the goals and the structure of the process, as well as the steps and the benefits. The first thing that I wanna do is kind of give an overview of what informational interviewing is. Sometimes people think that it is actually that job interview or it's what gets you the job. That is what definitely it is not. Informational interviewing is not a job interview and the objective of doing it is not to find a job. What it is, is an informal conversation that you have with someone who is working in the area that you're trying to get into or working in an organization that you're trying to have access to or in a field that you wanna get more information about. It's an effective research tool and usually it happens after you've already done some basic preliminary research. The basic goals and structure of an informational interview or what you want to accomplish is that you want to make a good impression. You want to gather some information that can help you make better decisions. You want to get more names or more contacts. And it's a way for you to also expand your professional network. And typically the way they're structured is that you introduce yourselves, you kind of give the person some context for why you're contacting them, and then as part of the conversation, you're gonna tell your story, but you're gonna tell your story in a way that also elicits some conversation and helps get the conversation going between you and that other person. When you finish with your informational interview, you wanna thank and ask for referrals, um, but the structure, you know, it can be different that's just kind of a basic structure that people um, use or go through. And so we want to kind of, as we talk this afternoon about some of the things that you wanna be aware of, we kind of can go back to that basic structure. Why is an informational interview important? Um, first, it's a way for you to get firsthand relevant information about the realities of whatever field or industry or position you're interested in and looking at and thinking about. You can find out about different career paths that you can take. You can get tips and insider knowledge, which can, which can be really helpful. And a little bit later in the presentation, I'll talk about some of the kinds of questions that you can ask so that as you're going through this process, you're collecting the same information. Um, you can learn about what it's like to work at a specific organization because sometimes that can be really helpful in helping you make decisions about what you want to do or where you want to go. And it's also a way for you to initiate professional relationships and expand your personal network because you're having these conversations, kind of no pressure conversations with 
people in the field. You're getting them to tell you things that you might not find if you just Google or do some random searches about that organization or that field. In this process of informational interviewing, there are six basic steps. And the six steps that you wanna go through and make sure that you, you carry out are first, doing some research on your own. You're gonna research the career field, but you're gonna also research yourself. And so we're gonna talk a little bit more about each of these. You're gonna identify some people that you wanna interview. You're gonna prepare for the interview. Then once you've done all that preparation, you're gonna initiate contact and we'll talk about how to do that as we go forward. And then another piece of this process is actually conducting the interview. How are you going to you know, follow up with these people and, and actually do the interviews and gather the information that you need? And then finally, you wanna always follow up. So each of these six steps is gonna be kind of the meat of the process that we talk about today. So the first step is being prepared and doing your research. You as an individual wanna make sure that you know where you're trying to go, what you're trying to do. You wanna find out about the people that you're going to be talking to. You wanna find about, out about the company, the field, what some of the expectations are. And some of the tools that you can use to do that are things like, the Occupational Outlook Handbook or LinkedIn. And I'll, you'll keep hearing me say kind of some of these tools and these resources um, as we go forward. And once I finish the presentation, I'll send you all a follow-up that includes the slides and the links to some of the resources that I mentioned. Um, as you're doing your research and getting prepared, you also want to think about what do you want these people that you're going to be talking about to know about you? What's your career story? If you're in a science area or a, a non-technical area, kind of what are the skills that you have? What is the value that you might bring to an organization? Why are you interested in the field that you're interested in? What have you been doing? Um, it's important for you to have a clear understanding of what your professional interests and goals are and be able to clearly articulate those because you're going to be talking to these people who will help carry forward your story. You also want to make sure that as you're um, preparing that you consider in your courses and in the research that you've done or in things that you've been involved with what you enjoyed the most and how that might apply to the work that you ultimately want to do. And the reason that you do that is it helps you prepare your career story, your information about you. So, you know, sometimes we'll have people do different assessments, strength, strengths finders, personality assessments, um, and talk about their experiences and really identify the specifics of what you've done through your graduate programs. And maybe depending on your field, maybe some of the things that you've even done as an undergrad leading up to the programs that you're currently in. You wanna be able to describe who you are, which is really important, not just what you do, but who you are as a person, who you are as an employee, a potential employee, you know, and what are some of the things that you bring to the table? You want to highlight your motivations and some of your non-technical skills, because a lot of times those things can be really important. And ultimately, you're trying to convey your value to whatever organization it is. The second thing that you want to do in this process is identify the people that you're going to be talking to. And how do you do that? You want to start to think about who you already know. Do you have contacts already? Um, it might be, you know, through your professors or other professionals that you have been involved with. Are you in any professional organizations? Are you using your ODU alumni network? Or if you've gone to any other institutions, 
the, um, the alumni from those institutions. A lot of times people are really happy to share their information about themselves with you and it's their way of giving back. You can do cold calling. Um, you know, people use LinkedIn and they will look for contacts from their institutions or look for joining uh, major related or interest related organizations or groups that are through Facebook or LinkedIn or any of the social medias. There are some of the more academic social media groups like the academic, academic um, what is it? The academic um, groups and things like that or some of the professional associations might also have groups. If you've gone to networking events, you can collect business cards. You wanna to try to make sure that you do that and then you follow up with those people. And that might be a way to start making those connections between and among people so that you can start to follow up and reach out to those people that are most interesting, or maybe you started a conversation and you wanna follow up. Um, sometimes there are directories that you can use of different employers, depending on your industry or your area of focus that you can use. And then sometimes you'll get referrals from other people. So maybe somebody that you meet that isn't in your field, but they know somebody and they say, oh, you should contact this person, Bob Smith, because he does this thing that you're interested in and you might wanna to talk to him. Those are warm referrals. And you might ask that person if they could virtually introduce you. I've done it numbers of times with people that they wanna meet somebody. So I make a, a virtual introduction so that they have the name and the email address and then they go ahead and follow up and continue to, to develop that relationship and perhaps go on to do informational interviews. The third step is, you know, kind of getting yourself prepared, making sure that you have your resume, um, starting to think about what the questions are that you wanna find out, that you wanna ask about. And the things to remember about the preparation process is one, that it's not just about the job posting. It's actually not about the job posting at all because there might not even be a job posting. So don't focus on what the job is focus on what you, what's important for you to find out. And what you wanna think about is that it's like asking for directions. If you're trying to get somewhere and you're driving in your car and you stop at a gas station or you stop somewhere and you ask somebody, you know, how do you get to, or if you're on campus, how do you get to web center? They're gonna tell you what you need to do and how you, go about navigating from where you are to where you want to be. And so these informational interviews are just like that. You're asking for directions. You want to ask people for information that's going to help you get from where you are today to where you want to be in the future. And then you have to, it's up to you to follow those directions. And you know, like sometimes when you ask people for information, they'll give you, sometimes it's not quite right, but as you travel along, you see like, oh, they didn't tell me about this bit of construction and I'm gonna have to detour. So sometimes there might be some detours or they might miss the construction and you have to also be paying attention. But what's really important that helps you be able to do that is making sure that you include good questions. So you really think about what you wanna ask them so that as you're going through this conversation process with them, you're getting the information that you need. So ultimately, this idea of informational interviewing is about engaging, getting excited, and starting conversations. It's about speaking in clear, accessible language to the people that you're talking to because sometimes they might not be directly in your field. So you have to be able to explain to them what you're doing, what you want, what you need without them getting confused and lost in the jargon. You also have to be able to explain your science 
or your area or your focus or what it is that you want to do. And really what it's all about is making human connections. And each of those connections need to be tailored for the audience that you're speaking to. So every informational interview, while it might have the same structure and the same format, might be slightly different because of who you're talking to and what you're talking to them about. So the fourth step, you've kind of figured out who the people are, you've done your research, you know about yourself, you know what you wanna ask, now you need to reach out and contact those people. You've created your list and all these things. So you can reach out and contact people. You know, a lot of times it's easier to do email. People are hesitant sometimes. So if you have some email addresses, you can send an email to the individuals. You can phone them. Maybe you're going to reach out through LinkedIn or some other social media platform, professional social media platform. Sometimes the connections might be through, you know, Facebook or Instagram or Twitter or link, you know, whatever, whatever the media is, you still want to keep it professional. If you're emailing them or calling them, or even if you're reaching out through social media, you still want to let that person know how you got his or her name. So if you would make, if some, if a professor made a referral, or you were at a networking event and you met the person, then you might say, you know, I met you at the networking event that was on campus last week. Um, we exchanged information and I just wanna follow up. I'd love to talk to you about and, and be specific. Let them know what you're looking for information, that you're looking for information, that you're not necessarily looking for a job. You wanna make sure that you are clear in the expectations. So how much time would you like to take of, you know, of theirs and what you're specifically going to be talking with them about so that they can be prepared as well. Um, if you're calling somebody and you actually get the person, you can ask them or be sure to ask them if now is a good time to talk or if they'd like to schedule some time to meet at a later date. And it can be through, again, the phone or Zoom. Maybe you'll meet at a coffee shop in person. It's kind of whatever makes the most sense and whatever is most comfortable for you and the person being cognizant of their time and what they need to also be doing. And if they say, yes, this is a perfect time, I'd love to talk to you and make sure that you have questions already prepared so that you're ready to go when they say yes. And if you say you're gonna take 20 minutes or 15 minutes or 30 minutes, then make sure that you pay attention to the time so that you take that 15 or 20 minutes or whatever it is that you have already kind of let them know. If you say you're going to follow up with them, um, and schedule another time, then make sure that you do that. Because all of these interactions are interactions that they're going to be using as a basis for their impressions of you following this conversation. So, you know, the fifth step is actually doing the interview. And if you're meeting them in person, and even if you're meeting them via Zoom or something else, you want to make sure that you kind of present yourself, just like we say when people are interviewing, even if it's a virtual interview, you want to dress professionally so that you feel in that moment the professional that you are trying to be. Um, so dress neatly and appropriately, just as you would for a job interview. It puts you in a different mindset. And especially that's important if you're meeting them in person because you wanna make a good impression. Also, if you're meeting in person, you wanna arrive on time or a few minutes early. And that's the same if you're meeting through Zoom or if you're planning to call them, make sure that you meet the time that you set up originally to call or meet them. If you have questions, you wanna bring that list of questions with you. You might want to take some notes uh, based on what they're saying so that you can remember and it helps you as you're following up. 
in the beginning of your interaction with whoever you're talking to, you want to remind them about what you're trying to do, what your objective is, and, and focus on getting information and advice, not the part about getting a job. You want to start with a brief overview of yourself, your education, your work, your background. So that 30 second commercial that we often talk about, or maybe a 60 second commercial, you wanna have that prepared as well. What you've done, what you're offering, what you bring to the table. And then it's, you've asked for this meeting to, to lead this conversation. So you have to be the one that directs the conversation. Um, but it should also flow and be natural. So you want it to be a two-way. It's not just you asking questions and the person answering. You want it to evolve into being a real conversation. But you should do most of the, or the person that you're talking to should do most of the talking. And again, you want to pay attention to the time and be respectful of their time. And if you said 30 minutes, then you want to spend 30 minutes. If you need to schedule some additional time, then as part of that 30 minutes, then you want to ask for that additional time or follow up. Or if you have other questions, are they open to meeting with you again at some point? Um, you also want to always be sure to ask the person if you can contact them again. But you also want to ask them, if there's anybody else that they might recommend that you talk to, to get a different perspective. And that's how you also start to build your network of people because you're meeting a person and you're asking for, even if they just have one other name to give you, that's one more link in your chain that's getting you towards where you wanna be. And earlier I talked about having questions prepared. Um, these are just some examples of questions that you might ask, but some of the questions that you ask are gonna really be dependent on what you're trying to find out and the research that you've done prior to your meeting. You know, you might wanna find out about the responsibilities that that person has in their role or responsibilities for positions that you're interested in. Um, you might want to ask about, you know, what they like about the work or the kinds of decisions that they have to make. Maybe you're going to ask about challenges that they have faced or things that they enjoy the most, which I said, um, in the work that they do. You might want to ask about how the position fits in the larger organizational structure or how it, it works itself into the career field or the particular industry that you're looking at. So asking these questions that are getting you information helps you be able to ultimately make better decisions. Um, some questions about lifestyle might be important. You know, how, how does this work affect your lifestyle? How does working in this field affect your lifestyle? What are some of the specific skills or abilities or interests or attributes that would be important for someone to have moving into this? How has, you know, a question that people ask now, even in face-to-face -face or virtual interviews when they're interviewing for jobs is about how the pandemic has affected the field, the industry, their role, so that might be something. Some of the things that you ask about might be related to current events. You always wanna be kind of thinking ahead. So what's happening in the news or in current events that might impact your the career field that you're interested in, the type of jobs that you're looking at, the industries that you're interested in, and you can ask questions that bring in those things as well. Um, and again, I said, you can ask if they have other people that you might contact, um, professional associations or journals or magazines that might be helpful for you. Books to read, texts to uh, websites to peruse and things like that. You're trying to get as much information as you can get so that you can continue to grow as a professional. Um, 
And, you know, I said several times, it's really important to leave each informational interview with at least one new contact. And then once you have that contact, you want to reach out to that person. And this is just an example of a referral letter that you might send to somebody that you have been given as a referral based on an interview that you had. So you, you know, can email them, reach out to them, and you can say, you know, recently I spoke to and who the person is that, that gave you the information about, and then tell them what you, you know, are interested in talking to them about and how this new person that you're contacting is going to be helpful in helping you gather additional information. Um, you know, again, reiterate that you're not expecting them to give you a job or talk to you specifically about a specific position, but you're, you want 30 minutes of their time to discuss whatever it is, and I'm going to call you or reach out to you to arrange a time to meet or a time to talk, um, a Zoom meeting, a Teams meeting. Um, let them know that you are respectful of their time and, you know, you promise to be brief. If you want to give them the option of reaching out to you, here's my contact information or, you know, whatever. So that you're, again, starting that conversation, leaving room for more. Um, and each time you have these interactions. One of the things that I didn't talk about, but is keeping records. So you want to also keep a record of who you've spoken to, when you spoke to them, any notes about key things that you learned. If they referred you to somebody else, you might want to include that so that you have this running guide based on these conversations that you had. And also if somebody follows back up, then you'll know that and you can make note of that. Or if you get referred to the same person multiple times, you'll know that as well. And you won't be reaching out again and again to the same person. So I know that some fields are small and they're very close knit not a lot of people. So you might see that, that you keep getting referred to the same people. So that's helpful if you know that, and then you can adjust. Um, and finally, the last step is following up. You want to make sure that, as I said, you keep records, what you learned, what more you'd like to know, what your next steps are, you wanna send a thank you note to the person that you've initially spoken to and thank them for their time. You wanna stay connected if you can, especially if you had felt like there was a good connection or a good interaction, you had good conversation, then continue to follow up with that person. Um, I know that I've worked with students that have been doing informational interviews or they're reaching out to people through LinkedIn or, or whatever the, the, the means. And one of the things that happens is they, they might make a, a connection, but they only reach out to that person when they're in a job search, in a job search mode. And so it's not really a relationship. It feels more like they're taking advantage of a situation a little bit. So you wanna think about how that comes across. If you have a good connection with somebody, periodically reach out to them, periodically follow up with them, stay connected so that in the event there's an opportunity, they might first think of you versus thinking of somebody else because you are that person that, that they connected with, they continue to talk to. You're not asking them for a job. You're, not ask, you're asking them about opportunities. Um, and you let them know that if they gave you some advice or a person to follow up with, let them know that you, you followed their advice and you took that information and used it so that it doesn't seem like it was just a one-time, you know, you're picking my brain 
and then you're not going to take advantage of any of the information that I shared with you. One of the things that I also want to make sure that you all come away with is, you know, if you need help with any of this process, where do you go? And our office, Career Development Services, is a great resource. It's there for graduate students, undergraduate students, and alumni. And that's one of the, the misperceptions, I think, is that career services is only for undergraduate students. We work with everyone. So our main office is in Web Center. It's on the second floor. If you find Starbucks, go upstairs, and we're right at the top of the stairs um, above Starbucks. And we help with a little bit of everything. We work with people on their resumes, cover letters, interviewing skills. We do mock interviews, job search assistance. Um, we do LinkedIn headshots and profile reviews. We work with career fair tips. And even um, our new resource is called Handshake, if you need help with that. Um, if you're looking for connections, we might be able to help you make those connections. One of the big places that um, where we have a lot of employers on campus is through our career fairs. And a lot of times students don't attend the way we'd like. Um, but it's a great opportunity to start that process, the networking, and maybe building to the informational interview. We just recently had our fall fair. And since COVID, we've been doing in person as a smaller event. And then we also have a virtual event. So this fall, over the two events, we had over 120 employers on campus or connecting through Handshake with opportunities for students at all levels. It was a great opportunity for, for you as students to start making those connections, maybe finding some people to network with and begin that informational interviewing process. Even if people aren't in your field, they still might be good contacts. Even if the industry isn't the industry that you're thinking, I wanna go there, I wanna work there, it doesn't hurt to make those basic introductions and begin the conversation because you might find that there are opportunities that you hadn't thought about. And one of the things with our office, the way we're set up is that each college has a small staff that works specifically with the college. So you want to connect with your liaison and start using us as a resource in this process. Um, you can do general assistance through our career coach at odu.edu, or you can go to our website and um, reach out to that those staff members. So here's our contact information. We are still, we are meeting with people in person, but you know, we'll do the social distancing and make sure that people are wearing masks and all those things. Um, but we also have a new tool called Handshake that is here on the slide. You can join Handshake. You all should have an account already. Um, and all you have to do is activate it. But if you go to our website, odu.edu forward slash CDS, and you see the image that says ODU and Handshake, if you click on it, it will take you to Handshake. Um, you can also contact your career coach by clicking here and seeing which appointments make the most sense for you based on your college um, and work with those individuals. Our um, drop-in, so we have a drop-in center that is virtual and you can access that also through our website. And you can email your resumes or CVs to careercoach at odu.edu if you want resume help or just have quick questions. You have about 19 minutes if anybody has any additional questions.
Have um, you, yes, go ahead. I, would like, I have a couple of questions. So um, in addition to doing the CV and the resume, y'all also help with the e-portfolios, correct? Um, we look at them. You probably would get the best assistance using the e-portfolio um, team that is in the Student Success Center with Megan Mize and her group. Okay, but y'all will review them to yes, ensure we, that? We, okay. Yes, we will look at them. We also look at, like, if you have LinkedIn or some of the those kinds of um, portfolios as well, we look at those also. We okay, can, yeah, because that was going to be another question. So then my follow-up question is, I noticed in one of the slides you were talking about when you make contacts to exchange business cards. So do you think as a graduate student, it's appropriate to have business cards made? Yes. Okay. Yes. And um, one of the things that we have started doing in our office, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to keep flicking. One of the things that we started to do in our office is we do have some business card templates available. And we, if you want, you know, we don't, can't make, you know, hundreds of cards for you, but, you know, 20 cards, just if you're going to an event or something like that, we have some templates and can print them out. So you just need to uh, stop into our career commons and ask about that. So we do, we have business cards, we have resume paper and we will do headshots. All for Great, free. Thanks. You're welcome. I see we have about 11 or 12 people. Can you tell me what programs you're in or kind of what, where you are? Um, so I am a graduate student. I graduate in May uh, through the MPH program. Okay. Anybody else? Hello. <clears throat> um, thanks for this presentation. It was really informative. My name is Danita Bird, and I'm in the um, I'm in the PhD program in public administration and policy. And I've worked an entire career and I'm pivoting and trying to re-enter the workforce. Okay. And um, I did attend the career fair a few weeks ago mm -hmm. and they were not interested <laughs> in, in, the, in my discipline. So I was interested in something in HR. And so they weren't, nobody was really there for that. Okay. And um, they, they didn't appear to be looking for graduate students. It was, I, I mean, you know, seasoned employees because I have a lot of experience. Okay. They seem to be looking more for, or, or more at students who- At a basic level. Yes, yes, yes. That, that being said, it was still a good event. It just okay. wasn't for me. Yeah. All right. Um, and one of the things, because we did hear that as a, a feedback this time, um, so something to know, just so you're not totally turned off from all of our career events, is that we had a lot of new employers this time that had not worked with us in the past. Mm -hmm. um, that might have been part of that. And also, I think sometimes it's the questions and considering who is the recruiter. So one of the things to know about career fairs, sometimes the people that come aren't the people that know the most information. Um, a lot of times they are um, whoever's available. Sometimes it is HR people. Sometimes it is not HR people. And it might be just an employee it might be somebody who's an alum or has some kind of connection to ODU. So they don't always know the right thing. So a good question to always ask if they try to kind of put you off, like, oh, we're looking for engineers or we're looking for whatever they're looking for is that question about, well, is there somebody within your organization that you think I should talk to so that they then have to do a little bit more? Um, I think that we often when people are in that situation and they don't know that they, like they're, they're supposed to be the expert and they don't want to seem like they don't know, but if you keep, if you push them a little, you know, um, then 
you might get further. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. And thank you very much. You're welcome. But if that ever happens, just let us know so that we, because I think that it also is, we need to better educate our employers. So I see that there are a lot of PhD students participating, higher ed, former lawyer, um, education, engineering management, physics, so electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, science education. Um, I think one of the things that for all of you, um, because some of your areas are maybe ultimately a little bit more specific or you know it might not be the obvious the obvious connection for an employer that that's where these informational interviews are going to be really important talking to as many people as you can and getting as much information as you can so that you can kind of get funneled into the right opportunities i hope that the information was helpful um, I really appreciate your efforts and we are as an office really trying to work to make sure that our services are available for everyone, um, undergraduate students and graduate students at all levels. Uh, and even as alumni, you can also use our services. So our uh, office address, our website, our, our general email address and phone number are on this last slide. And if all else fails, please reach out to me. My name is Alice Jones. I am currently serving as the interim director, liaison to arts and letters. And my email address is aljones at odu.edu. Um, I like to hear what's happening and if there are things that we can do to make your experience better, then I want to be able to work with my staff so that we can do that. So thank you.